Welcome back to Delphi Psychotherapy Billing Software. In this video, we're going to discuss the patient information screen in a little bit more detail than we did in the introduction. So again, from the main screen, you can highlight any particular client. We can click on patient information. And in a previous video, we showed you how to add a client. Uh, again, we focus primarily on the name, address, city, state, zip, uh, referral source, whether or not they have client or whether they have insurance, uh, their default procedure code, the provider of service for this client, place of service, their diagnosis. There's one really cool feature about the diagnosis that you should know. We can look up the diagnosis based on the code, like 292 point one two for example but if you don't know the code off the top of your head the really cool thing about this is that you can press the F3 key on your keyboard and it says search diagnosis codes that contain and I'm just going to type the word uh, there uh, sex and this will return a list of diagnostic codes that contain the word sex so uh, we might just pick a partner relational problem. Uh, again, if we want to try to find something that is uh, drug related or maybe alcohol related, we can press F3, type ALC, and click OK, and here's everything that's alcohol related. So that's a quick way to look up diagnostic codes if you don't happen to be familiar with the actual diagnostic code itself. Uh, another thing about this screen is over here in this bottom section, the medical information, uh, you see a, little, see a little scroll bar. And the information at the top is what's used in the vast majority of cases. But if we scroll this down, here's a bunch of other stuff that's almost never filled on the claim form, but at least it's there for you in case you need it. Um, often in workman's comp cases, uh, which a lot of our customers deal with. There's the unable to work from, unable to work to, hospitalization dates, outside lab, type of accident, etc. Uh, but in most of our customers don't really have to touch that kind of stuff. Now, another screen here is the uh, these tabs across the top is manage care notes, and these are the notes that we set up back in the manage care settings on the main screen. You really shouldn't use these here. If you want to access the Manage Care Notes, I would close this screen and go to Manage Care. And then these are the notes that relate to their benefits or authorization limits. Let's go back to Patient Information. The next tab is the Insurance Coverage tab. Again, if they don't have insurance, then you would simply uncheck this box and the Insurance tab goes away. I'm going to go ahead and check that box and take a peek back at the Insurance Coverage. And in this case, I want to add secondary coverage. So if I click Add Coverage, and their secondary coverage is Medicare, then depending on who I'm highlighting here, the information down below is relevant to that. So the insured's ID might be the Medicare ID. And if I click on Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mass, I'll put the BCBS ID. Now, if I click again on Medicare, you'll notice that this information changed down below. On the Blue Cross coverage, if we look at the carrier of the policy, that's actually Norma Aaron in this case, the wife, uh, so in this case spouse, the relationship of the insured to the, to the client. Uh, if I go here on Medicare, this is actually Hank's coverage, Hank's own coverage. So depending on who you're highlighting, the information down below is relevant. Uh, the next one is the assessments tab and we'll devote a whole video to ass assessments but the idea quickly is I can add a new assessment and I do that if I could set up my own assessments or treatment plans um, maybe an intake evaluation so I'll double click on that and here's a intake evaluation that I can keep for this particular client we'll talk in much more detail about that under assessments in its own video but now I have an intake evaluation on file for Hank. If I go to the accounting tab, 
Uh, the number of days, I'll just cover each of the items as it goes through. This is the number of days that the client has to pay for their bill before it becomes overdue. Delphi does a wonderful job of aging accounts, current, 30, 60, 90. And by default, all the clients in the, in the program uh, overdue days are set from the accounting screen, the setup default client. If I go to setup default client under accounting, uh, I might want to make this 30 days. And then if I go back to patient information under accounting, if this was a new client, that overdue days would be 30. Um, but we might want to give him a little longer to pay, 60 days, uh, a little less time to pay, 15 days, or uh, what, what, what have you. Um, Delphi will also calculate an interest rate or a service charge rate on overdue client balances. We'll devote a whole video to that. The custom statement message for this client only, if you want to say, you know, happy birthday, um, whatever it might be, congratulations on your new child. This would appear on their statement and their statement only. Uh, the, the default source of payments, we'll devote a little bit more to that in its own video, but you can define your own payment sources for payments. Uh, if you happen to get payments from various grants or churches or funds or various categorations, ca categories. If you want to make sure that this person never receives a statement under any circumstance, we can say don't print. If you just leave it alone, they'll always get a statement. The alternate statement address, if different from the client address. Uh, we may want to send this to Hank Aaron's grandmother, and that might be uh, Carol Aaron at a different address in a different city. Let's just pretend this is Seattle, Washington, and the zip there. Now, if you want to make life a little bit easier, we can yank the client address, copy the client address from the client file. This is back in the patient information screen. If I click on this button, this will replace the alternate address. Address copied, and here's the address, but we leave Carol alone because it's going to Carol Aaron. Really quickly, I'm going to close this screen. Well, when you print a statement, the statement will now be addressed to Carol Aaron. The bottom of the screen contains a bunch of user fields, and these fields are custom fields that you can design and uh, set up for your own practice. Uh, the fact of the matter is that we cannot anticipate everything that you might want to keep track of. So you can define your own text fields. In this case, we created a text field for race, religion, and their hair color. Uh, obviously, these are somewhat arbitrary right now. Uh, the date, if you want to create your own date fields, uh, Boolean, you know, check boxes, true or false, and numerics, if you want to keep track of dollar figures of something that we had not thought of. Finally, the last tab is the sticky note. And if we want to always be reminded anytime we touch Hank Aaron on the main list that uh, Hank always needs to pay in cash. Uh, if we close this screen, and the next time we touch Hank Aaron, we're going to get a sticky note will always appear. Hank always needs to pay in cash. If I click on a different client, the sticky note goes away because he has no text in his sticky note. But if I go back to Hank Aaron, Hank always needs to pay in cash. So this is useful for reminders that you might want to have pop up uh, anytime you touch this client. If I go back to patient information and click on sticky, if I delete all this text, then the sticky note will go away. But here's a little gotcha that sometimes people get confused about. If I delete this and I close this screen, then I won't see a sticky note anytime I touch Hank Aaron. But computers have an IQ of zero. And what often happens here is if we had a sticky note that said uh, whatever, And if I highlight this and I press the space button, computers think a space is something. So if I close this screen and then I click on Hank in the future, 
I get a sticky note that appears to be blank. It actually has a space in it. And so sometimes people wonder why we're putting a sticky note up. It's because you didn't really delete the text inside the sticky note. And if I go back to the sticky and I click here, there's actually a space there, but you can't. it's hard for humans to see this. And if I uh, just simply backspace over this or press the delete key several times, then uh, next time I touch Hank Aaron, his sticky note won't appear. So from the patient information screen, you have the basic patient information, medical information. Remember, there's a scroll bar here. Oh, one other quick thing, the procedure code. He's going to get a $100 fee unless we have some kind of special arrangement with him. So if I make his unique fee uh, $75 because maybe he pays cash uh, and I close this screen, next time I click on record a session, he's always going to get a $75 charge as opposed to the default $100 charge. Now let's go back to patient information again. He needs to get a normal charge. I'll just delete that. But we have the patient information, medical information. Um, the managed care notes, again, should be accessed from the main screen. Insurance coverage, primary and secondary coverage, possibly. Uh, if I want to delete coverage, I just highlight the company and click delete coverage. Yes. And we're back to uh, Hank having a primary carrier only. Assessments, which we'll discuss in its own video. Accounting, which se uh, sets up some of the background information for the client. And sticky notes. Uh, that's it for some of the more in-depth features of the patient information screen.